The Battle of Ilipa was an engagement considered by many as Scipio Africanus's most brilliant victory in his military career during the Second Punic War in 206 BC. It may have taken place on a plain east of Alcala del Rio, Seville, Spain, near the village of Esquivel, the site of the Carthaginian camp. Though it may not seem to be as original as Hannibal's tactic at Cannae, Scipio's pre battle maneuver and his reverse Cannae formation stands as the acme of his tactical ability, in which he forever broke the Carthaginian hold in Iberia, thus denying any further land invasion into Italy and cutting off a rich base for the Barca dynasty both in silver and manpower. Chapter 1 Prelude After the Battle of Becula and Hosdrubal Barca's departure, further Carthaginian reinforcements were landed in Iberia in early 207 BC under Hanno, who soon joined Mago Barca. Together, they were raising a powerful army by the heavy recruitment of Celtiberian mercenaries. Meanwhile, Hosdrubal Gisco also advanced his army from Gardas into Andalusia. Thus, Scipio was facing two concentrated enemy forces, one of which would no doubt fall on his rear if he tried to attack the other. After careful planning, Scipio decided to send a detachment under Marcus Unius Silonus to strike Mago first. Marching with great speed, Silonus was able to achieve complete surprise when he fell on the Carthaginian camps, which resulted in the dispersion of Mago's Celtiberians and Hanno's capture. Thus Hosdrubal was left alone in facing Scipio's concentrated force, but the Carthaginian general, was able to avoid battle by splitting his troops among fortified cities. The Iberian campaign of 207 BC ended without any further major action. Chapter 2 – Pre-Battle Maneuver The next spring, the Carthaginians launched their last great effort to recover their Iberian holdings. Mago was joined at Ilipa by Hasdrubal Gisco, creating a force estimated at 54,000 to 74,000, considerably larger than Scipio's army of 48,000 men, which was composed of a large number of Spanish allies who were not as seasoned as Roman legionaries. Livy's figures, however, give the Carthaginian army 50,000 infantry and 4,500 cavalry, whilst he put Scipio's force at 55,000 men so it was also possible Scipio outnumbered the Carthaginians by a slight margin. Upon the arrival of the Romans, Mago unleashed a daring attack on the Roman camp with most of his cavalry, under his Numidian ally Masinissa. However, this was foreseen by Scipio, who had concealed his own cavalry behind a hill, which charged into the Carthaginian flank, and threw back the enemy with heavy losses on Mago's side. The two opponents spent the next few days observing and testing each other, with Scipio always waiting to lead out his troops only after the Carthaginians had advanced from their camp first. The Roman formation always presented the legions in the centre and Iberians on the wings, thus leading Hosdrubal and Mago to believe that this would be the Roman arrangement on the day of battle. Chapter 3 – Battle Believing his deception had taken a firm hold on the Carthaginian commanders, Scipio made his move. First he ordered the army to be fed and armed before daylight. He then promptly sent his cavalry and light troops against the Carthaginian outposts at daybreak, while advancing with his main force behind, all the way to the front of the Carthaginian position. This day his legions stood at the wings and the Iberians in the center. Surprised by the Romans' sudden attacks, the Carthaginians rushed to arm themselves and sallied forth without breakfast. Still believing that Scipio would arrange his force in the earlier fashion, Hosdrubal deployed his elite Africans in the center and the Spanish mercenaries on his wings, he was not able to change formation after discovering the new Roman arrangement because the opposing army was too close, as Scipio had ordered his troops to form for battle closer to the Carthaginian camp. For the next few hours Theo held back his infantry behind the skirmishing light troops and thus amplified the effect of the missed breakfast on his enemy. When he finally decided to attack, the light troops were called back through the space between the maniples to position themselves behind the legions on the wings, then the main advance began. With his wings advancing at a faster pace than the Iberians in his center, Scipio formed a concave, or reverse canny, battle line. Furthermore, the Roman general expanded his wings by ordering the light troops to the flanks of the legionaries, 
and the cavalry to the flank of the light troops, thus enveloping the whole Carthaginian line on both sides. Still refusing his centre, Scipio's legions, light troops, and cavalry attacked the half-trained Spaniards on the Carthaginian wings from front, flank, and rear respectively. The Carthaginian centre was helpless to reinforce its wings with the threat of the Iberian force that was looming large in the near distance but not yet attacking. With the inevitable destruction of its wings, the Carthaginian centre was further demoralised and confused by the trampling by their own maddened elephants, which were being driven towards the centre by the Roman cavalry attacking the flanks. Combined with hunger and fatigue, the Carthaginians started to withdraw, at first in good order. But as Scipio now pressed his advantage by ordering his Iberian centre into battle, the Carthaginians crumbled, and a massacre that might have rivalled the one in Cannae was only averted by a sudden downpour, which brought a hold to all actions on the field, and enabled the remaining Carthaginians to seek refuge in their camp. Chapter 4 After Battle Maneuvers Although temporarily safe in their camp, the Carthaginians were not able to rest. Facing the inevitable Roman attack the next morning, they were obliged to strengthen their defences. But, as more and more Spanish mercenaries deserted the Carthaginians as night drew forward, Hosdrubal tried to slip away with his remaining men in darkness. Scipio immediately ordered a pursuit. Led by the cavalry, the whole Roman army was hot on Hosdrubal's tail. When the Romans finally caught up with the Carthaginian host, the butchery began. Hosdrubal was left with only 6,000 men, who then fled to a mountain top without any water supply. This remnant of the Carthaginian army surrendered a short time later, but not before Hosdrubal and Mago had made good their escape. Chapter 5 Aftermath After the battle, Hosdrubal Gisco departed for Africa to visit the powerful Numidian king Syphax, in whose court he was met by Scipio, who was also courting the favour of the Numidians. Mago Barca fled to the Balearics, whence he would sail to Liguria and attempt an invasion of northern Italy. After his final subjugation of Carthaginian Iberia and revenge upon the Iberian chieftains, whose betrayal had led to the death of his father and uncle, Scipio returned to Rome. He was elected consul in 205 BC with a near unanimous nomination, and after receiving the Senate's consent, he would have the control of Sicily as proconsul, from where his invasion of the Carthaginian homeland would be realized.